What's up guys, this is Bobby at Topwater Kings. Uh, I'm out here fishing with Mike and uh, we're going over a few different things, trying to uh, make some videos, showing everybody some of the uh, tips and tricks on fishing, uh, try to help you learn a little bit, hopefully make you a little bit more successful when you go out there on the lake. Uh, we're gonna ask Mike a couple questions about uh, using the mono, fluoro, and braided lines and maybe that'll help y'all out when you go go to Walmart or Bass Pro or Gander Mountain, wherever you're going to buy your tackle from. Maybe it'll help you out when you're trying to decide from a wall of 500 different types and brands of fishing line. Help you kind of decide on what you should get, what you should not get uh, based on your particular situation. Mono and fluorocarbon <clears throat> are kind of almost the same thing virtually, just uh, fluorocarbon, they're made out of two di kind of different materials. Fluorocarbon is designed to be more of a stiffer line. You would probably want to use a fluorocarbon where you may be fishing a little deeper, you need a better hook set, you know, a little bit tighter tensile strength on the line. Uh, monofilaments are made with more stretch, they're made to stretch a little bit more. Those be the ones you might want to use on a on a shallow pond, you know, something like we're fishing today, right? Something like that. Um, I use mono in most conditions, most lakes around here, and uh, of course there's there's braided line, which is pretty much braided fibers. It's nothing like floor carbon or mono. It's basically like a, a braided rope. But uh, I like to use that in any situation where you're going to be fishing from the middle of the water section to the top water section because simply because it's very abrasive uh, if you notice if you run braid across anything any type of rock uh, wood anything like that it's very abrasive it'll cut very quickly and you'll go to hook set and lose your fish so I, I try to stay away from any any braid in any situation situations where my lure is going to contact make contact with any type of structure you know so you want to make sure that it's not Make sure that you're going to fish in a situation where you're not going to run into structure. If you're going to be running into structure or dragging on the bottom, I would typically tend to stay to your monos and floros. So braid is pretty much better as far as for strength. You know, if you're trying to catch something that yeah. you know is going to have some weight to it. It's got sheer strength. But, but you don't want to use it anywhere that it might rub against any kind of structure, logs, rocks. Anything like that, right. it's just gonna tear it up. It's, it's monofil believe it or not, mono monofilament is uh, is tougher than braid when it comes to the abrasion of it. When it comes to running against objects, uh, a monofilament is a lot tougher. So if you're but, gonna go fishing around, let's say you're gonna go out to one of the bigger lakes and you're gonna fish around one of the bridges, yeah, what you, what if anything is actually good for that? Uh, you I, I would go with monofilament. Go with mono. Yeah, it definitely be. It would be your best candidate uh, in that situation with lots of rocks around where you're, if you're using a crankbait or jig or a worm. You're gonna be running into all those rocks. So your general number one go-to line for a normal bass fisher is just gonna be mono. Correct. Other than the certain situations you might require braid. Right. I, I like to, like I said, I like to do braid on any of my uh, middle to upper section bait because I mean it's. Everybody knows, you know, if, if a fish hits 30 pound braid and you hook set it, there's no doubt you got a good hook set because there's no gift to it at all. It has no stretch. So it was the immediate weight of your hook set is the immediate uh, puncture per poundage, same poundage in the fish's mouth. So Versus in, in, a, in, a, in a, like a fluorocarbon monofilament, at the point of hook set, if you've got a certain amount of pounds, you're gonna lose the poundage on your hook set between you and the fish because it's got stretch. Naturally, if you say you're pulling 15 pounds of pressure, that fish is, is gonna receive less than that. So <clears throat> that's what I would like to go to with a braid. You can get a lot better hookups, especially on top water. So is there any different uh, different knots that you need to tie, like if you're tying on, uh, whether it's mono or if braid, uh, what what knot are you using when you're tying your hook on? Look. After you get this fish in, we'll talk about it. How about that? Alright. Uh, 
I mean, typically, I just I just use the Berkeley knot on everything. Uh, I've been told there's certain knots for braided line. Uh, I haven't so much followed that. No. Uh, I just use the Berkeley knot for everything, and it holds. And that's just where my success has been with, with it. I'm, I'm sure there's other knots though that are pretty more successful. But I don't typically lose fish, so I think the Berkeley knot's a good success. Now what about when you're uh, when you're choosing a specific type of line for your rod and reel? Uh, if you have either a bait cast or a spinning rod, is there a? Uh, yeah, there's a guideline actually. What if, is that? If you'll look at uh, this one, don't really say it. If you'll if you'll look around the rim right here, it'll tell you the poundages. Uh, this particular reel right here says it has a line capacity of 180 yards of number four, 40 yards of a six pound, and 100 yards of eight pound. You just gotta kind of uh, abide by that. Which actually, I think I got 10 pound on here, which is a little bit over, but it still holds that too. Now, what's the difference between when you buy the line, your braided line is going to say a different pound? Than what it actually is. Explain that. Yeah, a lot. Even though your braided line says like 25 pounds, its actual diameter is about six. So, 20 like a 25 pound braid would have the, the it'd be the size of, of a six pound mono or four. So if your reel on it says six, you need a six, right. you can either get a six in mono or, or get like, like a 25 30 in braid. Okay. It'll tell you. Uh, when you go to look at your poundage, it'll tell you it's equal to the diameter of X amount in mono. Okay. It'll say the same as six six pound diameter, or twelve pound. You just go by that. Now, what about your rod? Does your rod have the same thing on it? It does. If you look, if you look right here, uh, this particular one says a uh, line weight eight to seventeen, which means I could use uh, eight pound to seventeen pound mono or fluorocarbon or uh, it, that would pretty much be unlimited on braid 17 pound diameter and braids probably a couple hundred pounds so you, you can use any size of braid uh, it just kind of it tells you right there it tells you what line uh the lure weight suggested and it, it tells you the length a lot of these rods will tell you that does yours actually say it on it yep Mine is lure weight, quarter ounce to one ounce. Line weight, 10 to 20 pounds. Tennessee, 10 to 20? Yeah. So you, your rod, that rod right there would be good for a, essentially anything you needed to do. Okay, it's not listed on the, uh, on the reel. Now, for people that go out and, you know, they're listening to us and they think, Okay, well, I'm going to be fishing mostly in deep waters, and I'm trying to get a larger fish, uh, and they go buy some braid. They put their braid on their rod and reel, and they go out, and they realize <clears throat> they can pull on their line right here, and all it's doing is spinning off. They can't reel it in. They can't do anything. What's, what's the problem? Uh, a lot of times people will take braided line and tie it right onto the spool itself which is aluminum and uh, for some reason braid to aluminum does not have a good clinch point it, it'll slip and you'll you'll be thinking something's wrong with your reel and honestly your whole line is just spinning on your spool uh, what I'll usually do is take monofilament about 10 foot of it and go ahead and spool your mono onto your reel and start getting it down tight and make you a, a copolymer knot from braid to mono and singe the two ends off. Just make a nice uh, connection point there where you tied a nice knot, singed off, and continue to reel the braid onto the onto the rod. What that'll do is it'll keep your braid from slipping. It won't slip on the actual barrel of the reel. It'll actually be able to cinch down tight and you won't lose any fish. I've actually had some friends tell me they've hooked the big fish and it pull all the line off of the reel and just take it because they didn't tie the braid on right. And it just kept pulling. There's nothing they could do to stop it. You know? Yep. 
So I think it's important to do that.